Warning, this Bible story is not appropriate for children. You may want to use discretion watching or listening to this video in the presence of others. Most people have heard of the ancient legend of Sodom and Gomorrah, the evil cities that were destroyed by fire and brimstone falling from heaven. But I'm going to share with you a mystery about Sodom that no church will ever explain to you. First, the basics. Many of the stories in the biblical texts are allegories. We've discussed before that the Bible is a coded message about the time that we're living in now. Part of that coded message involves the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, which represent Babylon the Great, where we live now. In Luke 17, 29 and 30, it says that in the end time, fire and brimstone will rain down from heaven just like it did on Sodom and Gomorrah. Revelation 11.8 tells us that the great city is figuratively called Sodom and Egypt. Revelation 17.18 tells us that the great city is Babylon the Great. Therefore, end time Babylon, Egypt, and Sodom all refer to the same thing. End time Babylon sits on the beast, and Revelation 17.11 tells us the beast is the eighth king. That means Babylon the Great does not sit on the beast until the Eighth King rises. The Eighth King is the United Nations, so that means Babylon the Great did not exist until sometime after 1945. That means end-time Babylon, Egypt, and Sodom did not exist until after 1945. That tells us when end-time Sodom exists. Next, we need to understand where Sodom exists. Revelation 17.3 tells us Babylon the Great, in other words Sodom, sits on the beast and sits on seven mountains. Daniel 7.23 tells us the beast devours the whole world. Therefore, the seven mountains must cover the whole world. The seven mountains are the seven continents. Revelation 17.15 tells us Babylon also sits on people of different nationalities. If Babylon sits on the beast, and Babylon sits on people, then Babylon is sitting on the people of the beast. In other words, the people who worship the beast, as explained in Revelation 13.4. Revelation 13.2 and Hosea 13.4-8 explain that Yahweh is the beast. So, if Yahweh is the beast, then those who worship the beast are those who worship Yahweh. Those who worship Yahweh are the Abrahamic religions, which flourish in the pink area of this map. This area, then, is Babylon the Great, the great city, which is also called Sodom and Egypt. So, when Jesus talks about fire and brimstone falling from heaven in the last days, and says it will be like Sodom and Gomorrah. And Revelation 18 says Babylon the Great will be destroyed by a stone that falls from heaven and hits the Sea of Babylon. It becomes clear that it's referring to an asteroid impact in the Atlantic Ocean. This tells us the what, when, and where of the coming destruction of Sodom. But let's actually look at the story, which is something none of the churches do. The story centers around a man named Lot who lives in Sodom. A few angels visit Lot at his house. Then a gang of men come to Lot's house and demand that Lot let them gang rape the angels. Lot then offers to let the men gang rape his two virgin daughters instead. Then the angels cause the men to go blind, and Lot escapes Sodom right before the fire and brimstone kills everybody in the town. Then, after Lot escapes the city, he sleeps with his two daughters and impregnates them. So, as you can see, this story is incredibly sick. But this needs to be revealed because most Christians are misled about this story. The first and most commonly recited component of this story is that it involves homosexuality. Second, it involves rape, but not just any rape, specifically gang rape. What's even worse 
is that this group of gang rapists are not punished by the town, but are allowed to run rampant. This is apparent because they don't bother to hide their behavior. Instead, they stand outside Lot's house in plain sight and demand that he let them do this evil. Lot is expected to allow them to do it. There is no threat of police or any other justice in this town. The next horrible aspect of this is that Lot offers up his virgin daughters to be gang raped instead of male angels. But if you think about it, who needs more protection? Grown men who have angelic powers or Lot's virgin daughters? I'm not even sure if words exist for this kind of evil. No one in the church ever discusses this part of the story, but it's the third element, which is not just rape, but pedophilia. The fourth component of this story is incest. Lot later impregnates his own daughters. So not only does this man offer up his daughters to be gang raped, but he then rapes them himself and then lies about it, saying they took advantage of him, which is a classic blame the victim tactic that rapists often use to excuse their behavior. Now, upon hearing this story, any moral person should be sickened. But that is not how the majority of Christians react. Instead, most Christians react by defending Lot. They'll tell you Lot was a good man and that he didn't really want to commit incest. He was just a poor little victim himself. And I feel like I should not have to explain why this is possibly the most morally revolting story in the Bible. Yet, even more revolting than the story itself is the fact that Christians defend this behavior. So, you can see here the major components of this story. Which of these components do you think are the most evil? Well, most Christians will have you believe that the most evil element of this story is the sexual orientation of some of the people in Sodom. That two people who love each other are more evil, apparently, than a gang of rogue rapists running rampant throughout the town. That two full-grown adults who love each other are apparently more evil than a man who hands over his children to be gang raped. That two monogamous adults who love each other are more evil, apparently, than a man who commits incest and impregnates his own children. Not all Christians view this story the same way, but most that I've heard focus on the sexual orientation element and demonize that while completely ignoring the true filth in this story. And there is a term for that. It's called delusion. Even the book of Second Peter verse 7 indicates the opinion that Lot was a just man. However, the book of Peter is believed by some to have been written by Paul, who tells us himself that he is a false apostle who is followed by fools. In 2 Corinthians 11, verses 12 through 17, Paul says that those who desire glory, they may be found as we. In other words, they are like him. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. Paul is saying here that those who desire glory are like him, and they are false apostles like him. Then he goes on, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers, meaning the ministers of Satan, also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. So right here, Paul is telling us that some of the ministers who claim to be ministering righteousness are actually working for Satan. And Paul won't let this go. He insists that we understand when he goes on, still, in verse 16, he says, I say it again. Let no man think of him as a fool, 
yet as a fool receives him. In other words, Paul is telling us that he is not the fool. It's those who receive him who are the fools. And he continues in verse 17, saying, That which he speaks, he speaks not after the Lord, but as it were foolishly. Paul is the one who created Christianity, not Jesus. So these people who are justifying the absolute filth that occurred in Sodom and following Paul are the fools. Paul says that himself. They're being bound together as tares. Hosea 13 says that Yahweh will be the beast to the chaff. Most people who have understood the riddle of Babylon the Great know that the churches are the whore who sits on the beast. And in a former video, we discussed the two witnesses, those who Revelation 11, 3, and 4 tell us act as prophets in sackcloth for 1260 years and are the two candlesticks and two olive trees who Zechariah 4 tells us are the eyes of Yahweh throughout the whole earth and who Revelation tells us explicitly are the churches. The two witnesses are the churches of Yahweh throughout the whole earth. Jesus told us himself that the witnesses are hypocrites in Matthew 23, and we're told they are two false witnesses in Matthew 26. They worship Yahweh, Yahweh is the beast, and Babylon sits on the people of the beast. Babylon the Great represents the churches of Yahweh. Many know that. However, what many people do not notice is that Babylon is also Sodom. That means the churches are not only Babylon, the churches are Sodom. The churches of Yahweh throughout the earth are the two witnesses which are Sodom and Gomorrah. That means that the Bible is literally telling us that the real Sodomites are in the churches. And look at what the Bible says they do. They offer up their children to rapists. We are living in the time of Sodom right now. And most of us are living in the place where Sodom runs rampant. The churches are Sodom and Gomorrah. The churches are the two false witnesses. But there's another element to this story that goes even deeper, and we'll discuss that next week. For more information, check out the playlist Bibles Countdown to the Meteorite and Rescue and False Doctrine Revealed. Thank you to those who have made this research possible. If you find this video informative and want to see more like it, please consider providing support. I hope you're doing well, and I will talk to you next week.